go. Okay, so what we're taking off is an aluminum one inch open spacer and we're swapping it for a um, composite uh, four hole spacer. Ideally for this application, a, an open spacer is actually probably the better spacer to run um, because you probably can't see it because the carburetor is in the way. But this manifold, which if I would have been smart, is not notched in the middle so that you get si signal across the two, uh, two planes of the dual plane. Um, that can help with getting better overall carb signal for fuel draw, et cetera, uh, to have it where the pulses are uniform across the base of the carburetor. Um, another way to do it if the manifold's not notched is to run an open spacer. It gives you that same that same behavior is notching the manifold but i really don't want to run this one inch aluminum like i said it'll give me uh, one it'll give me a little bit more throttle linkage difficulties because the carburetor is up higher and this is designed for a carburetor that sits low and two the aluminum spacers actually transfer more heat up into the carburetor than uh, these composite type spacers so for now, I'm going to go to this alumina or this uh, four-hole spacer, and um, I'll probably see about getting a half-inch open composite spacer to put in here and to replace this one. But for now, this will should at least get our throttle all set up, and it'll probably work just fine. We'll probably still have decent carb signal um, and not have any issues. This isn't a race motor of any sort, so it should be fine. Should be. with that in there. Primaries. Maybe. Can't see. Yeah. All four barrels are opening completely no interference so we're good there carburetor sitting down properly it might be a little tight getting that bolt on right there but doable so now comes the fun part throttle linkage this is something that i had used in the past on uh, the red car it was set up with a holly but the the linkage should work the same going on here. This will go from here back to our pedal like such. And we we'll pull the pedal, we get the gas. So, let's see if we can go ahead and throw that on real quick. Actually, before we. Before we put that on, I, I know I can make that part work. Um, it might need to be adjusted a little bit in length and then obviously a return spring. But the other part of it that I haven't dealt with yet is this TV cable or kick down cable for the transmission. Uh, so I did go out to digging around on the interwebs again and I found another bracket. I, this one, good old, uh, good old Amazon. For the, uh, for the win again on this. It, from everywhere I looked, um, 
Um, it's not that I'm intentionally favoring Amazon, but uh, all the different sites that had different bracket options, they, it was all basically the same bracket, just coming from different places. So I went with the one that I could get the quickest for the least amount of dollars, which isn't always the best solution, but in this case, since they all looked identical and had the, the same instructions and the same setup, it was kind of a no-brainer. So hopefully, this will work for us. This is, it's, it's a similar idea to the bracket we had on the Holly, um, but this one, it says that it'll actually work and clear both on a Holly and on an Edelbrock um, format Carter style carburetor. So it goes this way. And I am also concerned that this is going to interfere with our throttle linkage. I don't know if that's going to work. But one step at a time. This needs to go onto our studs, which I already. What? Oh, yeah, it'll go. Okay. As much as I like carb studs, they're kind of a pain with these brackets. At least with the Edelbrock, they are. Oh, and our cast pedal's getting. <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. Uh, well, that's already a problem. I mean, it clears here, which that was the problem with the, the other bracket is the, it, it wasn't gonna clear the pivot area of this carburetor, but this one hits our gas pedal. So what we could probably do is figure out where our TV cable's gotta be which I think is gonna be up in this region, and then cut the back of it off. I think that sounds like a good plan. The one thing that is nice about this bracket over the, uh, the other one that I had on here before is the TV cable is included with this set, and it's not a separate piece you've gotta buy doubling your cost. So, this'll go right in this region somewhere, like such. Put a, a washer on here. Put a nut on so this assembly's all where it's snugged up. It can't go anywhere. Oh, this is being a pain. Okay. Yeah, that's right up against the gas pedal. So that's definitely going to have to... If we can get the TV cable to work up in this region, then we can cut the back of this off. And that should... Looks like that'll be above if we cut the back of that off. Fingers crossed. Bolts.
Yeah. It's okay. Is that? Walmart lied to me. Oh, I didn't talk to anybody. I looked it up on the website. The website says that that Black, Di Black Friday deal is purchased online. Oh, well, I guess we can go get one. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I'm totally putting that in the video. Yeah. You came out here. You asked if I was filming. I said, yes, I'm filming. You're always decent. Okay. That looks to be What? There we go. Oh, I gotta turn the bracket around. So, bracket's in, it's bolted up, but I put it with the L going back, and it should be with tension just a little bit right, right there, and we're, well, about the length of the L shy of where it's gonna need to connect right there. So I need to unbolt that, turn the bracket around the other way, and then that'll work. That's also gonna give us enough room to chop this off back here, which will allow for our throttle pedal to function. Ooh, can you get me the, uh, the channel locks there, lady? Red toolbox, second drawer down. Green handles. Oh, sorry, top drawer. Top drawer. Pliers are all in the top drawer. Yeah, no, channel locks. Pliers. Those are special crimpers. Yeah, those ones. What time is it? Seven. Well, seven. You buying me dinner? Yeah, you better go. If I hurry up. Yeah. Okay. Get that back down out of the way. Now I need the L to the front this time. Which will put it right there. Do I want it on that same outer track? No, I want the inner track if I turn it around. Okay. You'll be waiting for me? Okay. I'll be done soon. At least for this part of the video. Uh, we still got more to do, which will probably happen tomorrow. As you may have heard, it's about 7 o'clock. It's Black Friday, and, well, I'm being forced to go out. But she didn't make me go out this morning. I got out of that, so that's a win. go. Oh, just about perfect. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, 
there, once I get the stud in, this is connected, we'll have to do just a little bit of adjustment and it, the whole bracket's gonna have to come back out so I can cut the back of this off once I get it adjusted and know where I'm gonna, where, how far up I can cut it. Um, but there, the one other piece we still have to account for here is the actual little stud for the kick down. This, the stud, that the kick down clips onto is not included with the bracket assembly. It's a separate item, um, which I think is silly. The bracket assembly, if you've got a holly, this bracket is supposed to work on hollies as well. Um, it does include this guy, which is a little bit different than the one that I bought from Summit. The, the studs in a little bit different position, but this is for that side mounting like I showed on the holly in one of the previous videos. So it doesn't help. The, this stud, which I'll, I'll put a link up to both the assembly and, uh, and this stud, but this, you gotta remember, this is a separate item from the bracket itself. It's not included, which is silly. Just silly. And it didn't, it came with a nut and a lock washer only. That's what's included, the little stud, nut, and lock washer. I am adding a regular flat washer behind because I think it'll seat better on here. No, maybe not, maybe it doesn't need it, let's see. Oh yeah, no, it'll be good without it. Yeah. Well, we're gonna add the flat washer on the back side. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Flat washer, then a lock washer, and then the nut. And then this guy snaps in like that. And my cable is at a little bit of an angle. Uh, so I am going to move this to the outside. I'll go ahead and do that real quick. Damn it. So setting up a TV cable, which I actually need to space this out a little bit so it's straight. Um, everything I've read and seen, it's important to get a TV cable or a kick down cable, whichever one you want to call it. I believe it technically is considered a TV cable a, for throttle valve. Um, you don't want any slack in it when it's at, the, at idle and then uh, it's got to be able to open up all the way, which hopefully this will do what it is. Either way, I'm, I'm not an expert at it. Um, I'm still going to be doing a little bit more looking up on it to make sure that I've got it set up right because a, a poorly set up TV cable can burn up a transmission. And that's the last thing I want to do is burn up a transmission because I didn't set it up right. Um, so that's something, it's definitely something to keep in mind. Um, you want to get this set up pretty, pretty accurately. Um, of course, I just debacled my position on it.
TV cables in place. And other than needing to shim the stud out so that it runs good and straight, yeah, it goes to full throttle without bottoming out the cable. I think we're probably good there. Um, and we'll make sure when I cut this off, I'll leave a little bit more room for adjustment. Not a lot, probably another quarter inch behind there. And uh, that should do it. The other piece on there, which will be the last thing I do, because the, otherwise the wife will come back out here and give me the tenth degree about wanting to go do her shopping, is this little guy, which I think this is the one I want. I don't want that one. I don't want that one. So yeah, I think it's this is the piece we're going to use, not that one. Okay. Um, and this is going to be our throttle return spring. Our throttle return spring is going to go right here on the other side, adjacent to the TV cable. That way, and then go this way. We'll go right there for now. Let's see, how long is the spring? So we'll hook here. Oh, it'll go back further. Okay, so we do want to go the other way. So and with these brackets, I mean, I don't know that there is truly a, a one correct way to set these up. I doubt it's one correct way. It's probably many different ways it could be set up. Um, oh, and that nut that I dropped, it's not, there's not a spare. It's for this. Oh man, um, I recommend putting this one in first. <laughs> oh, what a pain in the neck. Uh, double springs, if you have double, double return springs, they're intended to go one inside the other, like such. That's how you make them fit. I will, seeing as this pin is in the bottom hole down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the back side of this bolt. Ooh. Yeah, that's what we're going to have to do, at least for now. Um, but I'm going to use it for now. I'm going to hook it on the back side of this, of the uh, stud for the kick down. I may have to come up with a a better solution. Well, I will have to come up with a better solution for that because if I tighten them down on there, they won't be able to move loosely and you need your spring to be able to just kind of move a little bit as it stretches because otherwise it's going to twist it and you don't want that. That's that's a another dilemma I will ponder over. And this all said and done, this better work out. It's kind of a pain in the ass pain in the ass to get back in here. Ow! I hooked myself. That might still be a little heavy. Um, we may end up having to turn that bracket around the other way to uh, get a good tension on it. But for now, that's where I'm going to have to walk away. I'm going to have to come back at this a little bit later. Um, we still need to, we'll have to finish fiddling with that, cut this off so that we can then install our, our actual throttle actuation, which is going to be close. It's going to be close if that's going to work or not. We might have a little more troubleshooting there to do. Um, and we might also have to do away with the, the half inch spacer that's in there um, in order to get the carburetor lower, to lower this whole assembly so that the throttle linkage will work. Uh, the joys of figuring it out when you're not doing 
bone stock OEM and can open the manual. But we're getting there. Um, so you will see coming up uh, probably in just a few moments, I'll uh, be back at problem solving this with solutions for the various dilemmas. It's a new day and it's cold and it's raining a little bit. So what better place to be than out in the shop? Uh, Last time I was out here, I left off with getting the throttle bracket sorted out, and I came out here and I, I fiddled with this. Here, I'll show you what, what we got going on here. Um, oh, don't worry about that. Tool down. Uh, I'm good at that. So here's the bracket assembly right here, right? And this is our TV cable and our return spring. I did have to shim this guy out a little bit to get a better... A little bit better line on the TV cable, which also gave me a place to hook the return spring, which that worked out, seems to work out pretty well. Everything there seems good. I can get the full throttle. Springs are a little heavy, but we'll have to adjust that once we can uh, actuate it with the pedal. Um, a little heavy by hand doesn't mean it'll be heavy on the pedal. Uh, we do have this issue where the throttle pedal right now back here is up against the bracket. Um, there's no way for it to move and it has to come forward so that we can put our our linkage in, get that adjusted, and have room for that to work. Um, I still think that this half-inch carb spacer might end up being an issue. We might have to pull that out um, so that we have enough room for the linkage to actually move properly. Uh, TBD on that until I uh, modify this bracket to account for this problem. We can't put the linkage in and find out if it'll clear with the spacer. So the next step here is we're going to, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, I'll point at it. Give me the screen. Yeah, you can see, you should be able to see that. Right about there, I put a score mark right there. That's where we're gonna cut this off, um, get rid of all that extra back there. I don't see needing that with this adjustment, seeing as I'm already a little tight on the spring, so the spring might actually come forward. And the TV cable, uh, it's not gonna need to go back any more than, you know, I've got another quarter to three eighths of an inch of adjustment beyond that line. So what the plan is, I'm fairly certain, let me grab a magnet, we'll, we'll be 100% certain. I'll grab my my magnet on a stick. Where is it? Oh, it's over here. Um, I'm fairly certain that this bracket in here, ooh, spinning around, um, is, yep, that's a steel bracket. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna hack this off and we'll hack it back here close to the end and then we'll see if we can't weld it back on and close this so that, you know, it's a complete bracket and maybe clean it up and squirt a little bit of paint on it on a day where it's not 40 degrees in the shop, um, which means it may never happen, but nah, not worry about it. And worst case, we end up screwing it up and have to uh, get another one. This kit, I think, was only about 20 bucks. So getting a new one, if if we end up butchering one, figuring it out, and we have to replace it, eh, there's worse things, right? But, so that's the plan. Uh, I'm gonna set the camera up and tear this apart, and get this cut and welded or attempt to weld it. Um, disclaimer right now, I am not, wait, wait, wait. I am not a trained, certified, or expert, or even a quality hobbyist welder. Um, I understand the principles of welding. I understand what the machine's supposed to do. I have welded some things in the past, but it probably won't be pretty. Either way, you're gonna see it, so just deal with it. Um, so, let's get started.
Okay, before you grill me over the uh, the ugly welding that just occurred, um, remember, I am not a welder. I am not a certified welder. I've never claimed to be a welder, and I am very uh, under practice. Like I said, I understand the principles of welding, um, the, the idea of how welding works, uh, but I am very low practice. I don't weld very often. Um, it's something I would like to get better at and do more stuff. Um, this was a perfect opportunity to do something that was completely non-critical, uh, make the bracket look a little more finished. Uh, as you saw, I do know how to use a grinder, and if you can't weld worth a shit, um, at least clean it up, right? So that's what I did. I cleaned it up a little bit, and you can see, you know, the, the penetration's there. That piece isn't going to come back off, you know, even out at that outside edge. Now, you can't even see where there was two pieces other than I didn't clean it up very square. So that side, you can see where it was. I didn't quite fill that all in. Um, the little the welder I was using was a link, little Lincoln uh, 110 weld pack. It doesn't have very many settings that are adjustable. adjustable. Um, it's a flux core machine. It doesn't do a whole lot of um, quality welding. It just doesn't have the capabilities. But um, it'll do stuff like this and get it done. And if I clean this up just a little bit more with a, you know, a good little file that can actually get in there and round those edges, um, break these edges a little bit and throw a coat of paint on it, that would actually look, you know, semi-finished. Um, turns out the powder coat or whatever it is they, whatever paint it is they put on this um, is very flammable. As you probably noticed, I lit it on fire, the bracket lit on fire a couple of times. That was kind of cool. But anyway, our brackets cut down. Um, we cut about, what is that, two inches, two and a half inches? Um, two and a quarter. We cut about two and a quarter inches out of it. Uh, that's the length that was right there. That should uh, should get the job done for us. So let's put it back in. That's what I was afraid of. So we're still not out of the woods yet on this. Um, as far as getting this to work, this gas pedal needs to be able to come forward to about right here and still connect to up here. So that's clearly not doable. Um, uh, we'll pull the carb spacer out. Uh, I'll have to change the uh, the carb studs. They're already too long, uh, so that'll take a couple minutes. Uh, let me uh, let me get that done. I won't do that on camera. There's no reason to film that. It's just what it is. Uh, and we'll be back to uh, try again. Well, at some point the camera turned off, and I at this point don't know um, when or where that was. So I'll just tell you where we're at. And who knows what got cut off and what didn't until I actually do some of the editing. But brackets in, uh, the carburetor's bolted down. We've got no carb spacer under it, so we're as low as we can go on this intake manifold. Uh, I've got the whatever you want to call it, the, the linkage in for the throttle pedal. And we can't quite to idle. Um, I think what I might be able to do is I might be able to put a bend in this right about here so that it comes up a little bit and then forward. That's probably my best bet. So otherwise we're damn close. Um, it will go to full throttle. It's right back. That's why I can't make the link any longer. Um, because that's full throttle right there, and this arm is right back just about to kiss the firewall. Um, so there's no room for it to go back further. But So we'll have to do something right here 
And again, I could, it doesn't look like I can cut enough. I'd have to cut the bracket off about half to about half of what's there if I didn't, if I don't modify this. Um, and that won't be enough for me to put this stuff on and still have a little bit of adjustability to make sure it's right. So I'm going to pull this back out and uh, see if I can't put a kink in it. And if that'll uh, allow us to uh, maybe lengthen it a little bit and have it come up and then forward. And yeah. So uh, we're getting there one step at a time, slowly. So the, the linkage is now kinked. Uh, this hopefully will resolve our issue. Um, I, because I put a bend in it, it's not quite as long eye to eye as it was before, which I wasn't sure. I'm not sure if that was the right length or not, but because I put a bend in it, I went ahead and took a couple turns out on each of these heim joints just to lengthen it back up again a little bit. So we're going to put this in like this back here. Remember my my stacks. Come on. There it goes. Washer. Washer. Nut. Now, if you're doing something like this with the factory style gas pedal, it's got a rubber bushing um, that's sleeved in this metal arm. So you'll want to use a nylock nut on there on the, on the through bolt because you don't want it overly tight because of that rubber bushing. If you crank it down tight, then you're, it's going to make your pedal stiff because of that bushing's trying to squeeze out of the metal. Um, so you just go right until it's snug and then you're good. All right, let's connect the other end and find out if this is going to work. That'll go there. Bolt. Nope, wrong way. So you also want to make sure if you do use heim joints, you want to uh, make sure that whatever's against the actual heim um, allows for a little bit of pivot movement without hitting the housing that the heim is in. Uh, that way it doesn't, that'll also help prevent binding. Which can be kind of a pain depending on your heims to find washers that are just the right size, that they're not too, you know, big enough to fit on the bolt, but not so big that they hit the, uh, the housing. Full closed. We're just barely clearing right there, but we are clearing. That's bottomed out. And full throttle. I think we got something that'll work. Um, I may come in here and take a little bit of this corner off just to uh, 
give just a little bit more room right there. It's probably not more than a, a fingernail between this bracket and uh, between the bracket for the kick down assembly and the return springs and the throttle lever. But that, I'm going to consider that a win, or maybe I can link in. If you know what I'll do, is I'll lengthen the, uh, the rod just a little bit more, and that should uh, give us a little more clearance right there for when that's out. But, um, so yeah, that's the excitement there. I'm going to finish. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this one more time. I'm going to get the kick down and return springs put back on there, and we should be able to call this done. Well, we're going to count up a victory on this guy. Um, well, uh, well, I'm probably going to delete this first part of this, so we'll uh, let's restart this. Take two. All right, while, uh, while the camera was off, I, uh, I proceeded to do some of the nonsense stuff that isn't really worth uh, filming. Not that anything I do is really worth filming, but eh, whatever. It's besides the point. Uh, what I did get done was the water neck. I went ahead and put a, let's flip this around. Let's, you don't want to look at me. I'll get down in here. All right, um, changed out the gasket on the water neck. Uh, the one that I used before was had an adhesive on one side of it. Um, I've never used one like that. And I was I had it on the shelf. I'm not sure where it came from or why I had it, but I was like, ah, we'll give it a go. Um, and it leaked. So I'll probably never use one like that again. This is just an old, just a Felpro small block Chevy, typical run of the mill, uh, average everyday 30 cent gasket that costs way more than that for no good reason. Uh, what I did do in combination with the, the gasket change was I put a very thin layer of RTV, Permatex Ultra Black, um, on the intake manifold surface and on the surface of the water neck. Um, both of them had some imperfections. I noticed uh, that I probably assumed the gasket would take care of, and that might have been why it leaked as well. It may not have had anything to do with it having the, being the adhesive type one. Um, it might have been the imperfections in the surface because this intake manifold was a swap meet fine for 75 bucks. So it's not perfect. It's got some scrapes, some bumps, some bruises, uh, but, uh, and the water neck is older than snot. It's a very old cast iron water neck. Um, so, and it's got some erosion. You can tell on the surfaces of that over the, the years of how, whatever motor it may have originally come from and the service that it's given. So a, a thin coat of the ultra black on both surfaces to fill those little imperfections, clamp that all down um, and reseal the bolts. And that's all good to go. Uh, I am, because it's only, uh, what does that say? 47 degrees, even with a small heater on here in the shop, it's still only 47 degrees in the shop and it's, I think it's in the thirties outside. Um, I'm gonna give this a little while to cure up so that uh, hopefully the, the, the Permatex and the thread sealant um, both cure up properly before they get exposed to coolant. So that means we're not gonna fire it up tonight. But what I can show you is I also finished putting the throttle pedal assembly together and I'm really happy with how that came out. Let me get you in here so you can see that a little bit better. Uh, okay, so you can see my shortened bracket. Now that it's in here, my little work back here to, uh, to recap those ends, not so shabby, you know? It's way better than just having it cut off and having those ends open and it'll definitely keep these all nice and stable so that they don't bend or stretch out or whatever. The kick downs here, we've got our return springs down here. Well, it looks like we might need to adjust it a little bit. The inside, the inside springs, it's a little longer than this one that's on the outside. 
Um, it can't just pop off, but we'll probably adjust adjust those just a hair bit tighter. Uh, and then you can see the, the kinked throttle linkage right here. I, there's where I put that kink in it. That's up in there. And with the, the length adjusted, we got a nice, that looks about almost a quarter of an inch of gap between idle. The carburetor's fully closed at idle. That's our gap right there between the throttle lever and the bracket assembly. So that's more than enough. And then if I go and let me see if I can prop this camera up in a way that you can see the throttle actuation and I'll go command it from within the, whoa, way too low, way too low. Come up, come up, come up. Um, I don't know if this is going to stay. Okay. Um, no, that's not working. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Okay, sorry about that. I, uh, I, I, I ended up clipping some of that out. I had to find the right spot for the camera where I could put it down because it doesn't have the clamp on it right now to just clip it onto something. Um, it's on a little mini tripod, so I had to find a place where it would sit. But here we are. Throttle assembly, everything's looking pretty good. Like I said, a little bit of adjustment on the, uh, the return spring, or I might swap this one out that's on the inside for one that's just a little bit shorter. But if I come over here to the captain's compartment, and I stick my foot on in here, we have gas pedal all the way to full throttle. We're getting the secondaries, that whole goodness. So I'm, I'm happy with that. The gas pedal has got a great feel to it. Um, I said that adjusting this, this inner spring or swapping it for one that's closer matched in length to the one that's at the outer spring will be great. Our kick down has good alignment. Our kick down TV cable has good alignment. Uh, our throttle linkage is almost perfectly straight with minimal shimming here and minimal shimming here. Uh, overall, I think this is gonna work beautifully and it's going to be nice to drive uh so yeah that's that's where we're at um as you see i rerouted the plug wires they're going right here underneath and they're kind of held down by the the uh, tv cable so that they don't come up and rub on the throttle linkage i think that'll be all right um i might end up making new plug wires and see if i can come up with better a better routing solution or have to resort to you know one of those uh, setups that actually bolts somewhere. I do have an opening right here where I can make a little bracket that comes up and holds plug wires so that they're held in you know specific locations. Uh, but I think they're going to be all right where they're at. We'll have to uh, we'll just have to see how that goes. Um, unfortunately, I was whoa you're looking down. I was looking forward to getting this started so I could see if we fixed the lifter tick that we had, um, which we should have had that fixed right there up front in the beginning when I adjusted all the lifters. I don't think that we're gonna have any issues because there was two that were definitely a little bit loose, had a little bit of vertical play in them, which was gonna cause that tick. That's taken care of. They're all adjusted, should be, should be right on the money, but uh, We'll have to wait until the next video for that because, well, like I said, it's cold. The, uh, the sealants need a little bit of time to cure up properly. Otherwise, we're just going to end up with another leak. And we're going to test my patience. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to test my patience. So what do we have that's keeping us from putting this on the road? Not a whole lot, actually. We're, we're just about there. What we... The, the ignition stuff is still, I still got to order a new key for it, but disconnecting the battery is not a big deal. Uh, haven't done anything with the fuel tank yet, but we will do that. I do have a fuel tank over in the corner of the shop that I can swap in. Uh, and that's, that's really about it. We'll probably do some, some fuel lines, 
when we do that, but I, that's really not stopping us from driving it right now because it's not you know, an excessive leak. We could definitely test drive it with the tank that's in it and with the ignition the way it is. So the only thing that's holding us back from putting this out on a test drive, that sealant on the water neck. That's it. But the weekend's coming to an end. Uh, work week's coming. And I just don't think it's going to happen this weekend because of the weather. Because you probably also heard some excessive background noise. Uh, that's the rain. It's, like I said, it's in the 30s outside. It's raining. Uh, winter weather is hitting Oklahoma. We even have a chance of a snow dusting. So that really puts this, that test drive in this kind of in the very much a maybe zone. So that's going to do it for uh, this video, and we will see you on the next one.